Hi, I'm Helen Michelle Baggett and you're watching the Penniless Writer's Guide to the World. Enjoy! Not everyone can afford a luxury holiday, but that doesn't mean everyone doesn't want one. Some very clever people have realised this and come up with some very creative ways of getting you from one continent to the next, saving you thousands of pounds in the process. I shall attempt as many as possible in a wide range of countries and review what I've found. I will also let you know what's worth seeing and doing, eating and drinking, and what's best avoided in each location I visit. In these diaries, I'll give you tips about packing, visas, safety, medical emergencies abroad, how to save your money, booking flights, trains, coaches and cars, overseas embassies, even a few basics in various languages. Don't get me wrong, I love England. I love pretty much everything stereotypically British. I drink tea, I love wet weather, I read Shakespeare, I'd happily move into the British Museum. And my ideal man would be a straight Stephen Fry trapped in the body of a young Colin Firth. Not that there's anything wrong with Colin Firth's personality, but I'm pretty much just interested in the exterior here. Sorry Colin, and I'm from one of the most beautiful counties in England, the Isle of Wight. Whilst it's famous mostly for being that place stuck in the 1950s that your folks dragged you to on an ill-advised camping trip when you were a kid, this tiny island has grown up to become the hub of artisan crafts, live music and comedy, with virtually no crime rate and some of the cleanest, most picturesque beaches in the world. Why on earth would I ever want to leave? I've decided there's just too much in this big wide world that I want to see and do. I've always wanted to travel, for as long as I can remember. I want to learn as much as I can about other cultures, landscapes, languages, religions and ways of life. But I don't want to break the bank. As a writer and an artist, I've never been filthy rich. I've never even been slightly grubby well off. Nor will I be. Unless of course one of my books hits the jackpot like JK Rowling. Here's hoping. But I'm determined not to let money dictate where and when I travel. I decided shortly after Christmas 2013 that it was time to start my journey. After a truly awful year where I lost pretty much everything in quick succession, life savings, day job, flat, partner of six years, etc. I made a new plan, and it was going to start in Ireland. The grass is always greener on the other side. This English saying could have been invented for Ireland, as it is commonly known as the Emerald Isle. The artist in me quite liked the imagery of setting off from the Isle of Wight to the Emerald One. I've always had a longing to visit Ireland. Even before the movie P.S. I Love You convinced moviegoers worldwide that it's the only place where you could get over heartbreak, have a fresh start, find a new love of your life, and somehow sort out your career in every other aspect of your life simultaneously. Whilst that all sounds phenomenal, albeit heavily unrealistic, I mostly wanted to go to get back to nature. So that successfully made me sound like a crazy hippie. I am. But in order to keep this trip as cost effective as possible, I chose to try out Woofing. This stands for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms and is one of the ingenious organisations I shall be trying, testing and telling you all about how participating in them can assist your travel. The basic system is a near money free arrangement where you apply to stay on organic farms in countries all over the world in exchange for your help. 
you agree with your host how many hours and how many days of agricultural or domestic work you will do in exchange for free meals and board. You need to pay for your travel to the farm's destination and any relevant travel insurance, but other than that, it's pretty much free, making it a very cheap way to see the world. This system also allows you to meet great people, try completely new experiences and learn how to live more environmentally friendly. What better place to start in a broad study of farming than a place famous for its beautiful rural lands and very changeable weather? Mm. That bit proved a bit more challenging. The work you'll be required to do ranges from everyday weeding in the garden to DIY repairs in the family home to milking goats, beekeeping and everything in between, according to the website. So it's a good idea to discuss both your expectations and those of your hosts prior to your arrival. There may be things that you're not comfortable doing and you don't want to realise you're expected to do it every day for two weeks when you're already out there and there's no escape. That being said, it's a good idea to keep your mind and options open. Doing something out of your comfort zone might just open up a world of possibilities. After all, Woofing is an organisation centred around farming and therefore a certain amount of mud, dirt and other brown substances are probably to be expected. The website specifies that you don't need a CV full of farming experience. Different host families are looking for different things and you should look at what they're searching for just as hard as they are. Obviously, if their profile bio says that they have five dogs and two toddlers, it's probably not going to be a great fit for you if you have a crippling fear of dogs and are uncomfortable around young children. Really read the profiles and find the hosts that you think you'd gel well with. Not just the farms that have the prettiest profile picture or are only half an hour's drive from the town centre. Then sell yourself. Not in a prostitute way, but let them know your strong points. If you spent the last two months volunteering for a cat sanctuary, let them know that. Likewise, if you have absolutely no garden, animal or DIY experience, it's equally as important to let them know that too. Don't worry, doesn't mean no host families will consider you. Some of them are looking for someone exactly like you, a volunteer that they can teach everything to from scratch. Being honest and positive about your abilities, experience and personal strengths and weaknesses is only going to benefit you in the long run. It will help avoid any awkward situations when you're out in a foreign country and will help you find the host family that will fit best with you and hopefully ensure a positive and incredible experience for all involved. The most important thing I find is to be clear how friendly, keen and willing to learn you are in your profile bio. Although we're exploring woofing as a means of travelling for cheap, it's still a learning working experience. You are expected to pitch in. Just so you know, this YouTube channel is also backed up by an actual live blog. The Penniless Writer's Guide to the World has a blog which has even more information and all of the links to the different systems that I refer to. So if you want to try it out yourself, go and have a look at the blog and uh, you can go visit the websites that I talk about and you can have a look for yourself and see what you want to do and what you want to try. Okay, so... Have a look at that. Okay, bye.